the Sinister Quartet. The Twice Drowned Saint. Hello, we get to listen to a story tonight. We're so excited about yeah. story tonight. Sure, it has to do with saints that keep getting drowned. Hello, good evening. Day one billion of quarantine in which we are all wearing my mother's pajamas. I'm going to be reading to you from an anthology forthcoming in June called The Sinister Quartet. There's three novellas and one short novel, mine, which is The, Tw the Twice Drowned Saint. And I'm, I'll read you just a short selection from chapter seven, entitled Long Shot, The Serac. Are you comfy? Okay. So comfy. Okay. Are you comfy? <laughs> chapter seven. Long shot, the Serac. On our maps, Galefa was the center of the world, a white diamond enclosed by a blue diamond labeled the Gelfic Serac. This was the wall enclosing the angelic city on all sides, 200 meters high at the jagged tips of its peaks, 50 meters thick at the base, all of it of pure compressed ice. From its foundation, Galethel, rhombic in shape, was 15 kilometers long on each of its sides with a total area of 225 square kilometers. Most citizens assumed it was the shape that had earned Galethel its nickname, the Diamond of Belisar. But the saints who studied such things all knew that the origins went back much further than that. In ancient times, what later became our city was an inland lake fed by the Anasat River. Lake Amula was its name, sometimes called for its glimmering the Diamond of Belisar. Angelic revelations came piecemeal to the saints but over the centuries, a picture of Galethel's prehistory began to emerge. The saints recorded their findings slowly and painstakingly in the hagiological archives, but only a privileged few of the laity were ever permitted to study there, and so the story was not well known. I knew it, of course, because Alazar the Eleven-Eyed had told me. Lake Amula had once been a shining, shallow, saltwater plain. Only brine shrimp and brine flies lived there. Most living things found the waters undrinkable, and for this reason, humans never lingered long in its vicinity. And because gods did not go where their worshippers could not, it was a godless lake, content to be so. But millennia of quiet contentment were shattered when one day, from out of the burning depths of Belisar, a god did indeed flee to Lake Amula, pursued by an army of demons. With her fifteen angelic companions she ran, from who knew what war-ravaged realm beyond Belisar, from what army of conquerors or converters who upended her reign, from which sorcerer priests of stronger gods who had unleashed the demon horror seeking to devour her, Harried through the wastes, the god bolted at all speed until she came to the edge of that deathly glittering basin, Lake Amula. And springing from the salt rock shores, the god dove into the very heart of the shallows. She made such a splash that the lake waters flew up in all directions like a startled flock of birds, like a rainstorm in reverse. Mm. Then, from the epicenter of her own quake, the god reached out in all directions and wrenched the waters rising all around her, billions of tons of brine, a vasty saline ring of waves into the shape of her desire, a rhombus, which is to say, a diamond. A diamond, after all, could pierce in four directions at once, whichever way her foes came at her, Within the four walls of her diamond, she and her fifteen angels would be safe. And so, into this shape, the god froze the waves of Lake Amula, enormous fortifications of compacted ice. These she set as palisades of protection for herself and her angels. 
As long as her precious ones remained within the prescribed boundaries, her unmeltable, unevaporable, impenetrable ice walls, smooth as volcanic glass, hard as adamant, then the god promised, the walls would protect them. Nothing that crawled, flew, limped, or slithered out of the desert could harm them, not even demons, not even other gods. With the very last of her strength, she pulled a palace out of the drying salt pan that had been the floor of Lake Amula. Salt, the philosophers say, is a substance especially dear to the gods, being, as it was, anathema to demons. The gods' new palace was dazzlingly white, a kilometer-long corridor crowned in colossal domes, its walls and halls of compressed halite, its honeycombed chambers shaped like shells of all different varieties and all its doorways arches. But now the god had spent herself, spilling out almost unto self-emptying. She was everywhere in the pristine ice of the Serac, and she was at its salt-white center too, and being everywhere was also diminished. More tired than any god had ever been tired, she beseeched her angels to make a home of her new palace. It was theirs now, she said, to guard and be guarded by while she rested. So declaring, she stretched out on an altar of sparkling rock salt, not white like the rest of the palace, but glowing like the gigantic doors of the main corridor, pink and damp as the flesh of the inner lip. And finally, finally, on this crystal bed she slept. And while she slept, in tender form, the angels descended upon her and devoured her. Why? Thus perished the god Galethel, and thus was born Galethel, the angelic city. Angels, I told Alasar, when I was eight and freshly appalled to discover I was his saint, have always been assholes. <laughs> you have no idea, said Alasar. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Boop. Enjoy spreading out in tender form. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs>